Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Um, awesome. It's so good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. Um, while we're waiting for our speaker to join the stage. Ah, Nick is here. Hello, hello. Hello. Please give me a little uh, GM in the chat if you can, just to let us know that you're here. Um, super excited to welcome you back. Um, it's, yeah, Thursday. <laughs> almost the end of the week um so we're, we're going to be looking at in memory node for development and debugging uh we've got nick here from math labs uh yeah so uh yeah nick do you want to introduce yourself and yeah yeah hey everybody uh my name is nick vianova i am a, a devrel engineer here for matter labs and uh, zk sync um and uh I'm, i'll talk a little bit more about uh the in-memory node during the presentation, but uh, good to be here. Uh, so today's uh, talk is going to be about the in-memory node, which we've recently released, um, and how we are using it for testing and debugging. So uh, overall, this this era test node is what the repo is called and what, what the application is called. It's a local Ethereum test node. Um, it's also a binary, and we'll sort of talk about uh, how it's being used and, and the differences a little later. Um, but here's an agenda of the things we'll talk about. A um, little more background. Um, I've been a software engineer for, for 12 years, and I recently joined uh, the Matter Labs team earlier this year. So uh, this is a brand new frontier for me, but uh, this is one of the larger projects that I've uh, started working on and glad to share it with you today. Uh, there's my Twitter handle if you want to check out more information. Cool. So let's talk first about how can we test if you want to use the ZK Sync era uh, network, the layer two network today. Well, you have two options, right? The, the first one is uh, pretty standard, the, the test net. So we have a public network that we host, and it's deployed on top of the uh, Ethereum Gorli testnet. So that means the funds aren't real. Um, some great things about this, you know, uh, all of our docs, uh, tutorials, tend to point towards this direction. Um, you know, uh, people are very familiar with uh, testnets. And uh, it's very easy to just point a local setup to start using your contracts on this testnet. Uh, one of the headaches, as I have written here, is uh, having to go and find a faucet um, to get some of this Gorli ETH uh, can be quite painful sometimes. So uh, that is that is the downside, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and there's the second approach, which is a local network using Docker containers. So uh, we have a repo called local setup that we have on uh, github.com slash matterlab slash local setup. Whenever you uh, pull down this repo, there is a Docker Compose file, and you can use it to stand up uh, three containers for a full local network. Um, the three containers are going to be your layer one node, which is geth, your layer two node, which is a ZK sync node, and then finally a Postgres database. So this Postgres database is going to be uh, the storage behind ZK Sync, uh, your layer two node. So in combination, all three of these containers give you everything that you want uh, for validating smart contracts locally. Uh, this is uh, historically what's what's been there and um, what we've had easily available for for users to. Um, test with on their smart contracts. Uh, then we decided to invest more in the development experience, especially if you're just starting out, where uh, you don't have to have uh, this full setup right, to be able to uh, see uh, your smart contracts working. Uh, the, the thing that I haven't talked about with the Docker container setup is it's a few minutes to get up and running, right? That's not something that is easy. So what is an alternative? Like what else is out there? And we came up with an in-memory node called ear test node. Uh, 
So here are the key things that we have achieved with this. It starts up fast. So in less than a second, you'll have a local network node running. You can fork a network at any given height. You can replay transactions. It comes pre-configured with rich accounts, like some other you know, test nodes. You can uh, get access to the stack, to console logs, um, to a bunch of other information that I'm going to show later on. And uh, some of that even being diving deeper into gas usage and gas estimation. Um, yeah, so these are the things that we are really built into uh, the test node to give you an idea of where we're heading with it. So how do you run this thing locally? Well, the repo is up on GitHub. It's open source. And in our releases, we have binaries that you can just download. So depending on your operating system, just download the right binary, and you uh, should be able to uh, pull it down and just call era test node run. That's the name of the binary, era underscore test, uh, sorry, era underscore test underscore node. <clears throat> and you're up and running. So downloading the binary takes seconds, and then starting up uh, this run command takes less than a second. So uh, all in all, you can have a local network for testing and validation against uh, really fast. So let's talk about whenever we implemented and designed this in-memory node, uh, we had to describe and make sure that it's giving a clear use case that's separate from the existing testnet and that Docker setup. <clears throat> so I want to talk about the pros and cons, the comparisons. Uh, well, one of the big ones uh, is we wanted to make sure that this thing runs locally. Um, we wanted to have a tool that people can use for their CI CD. Uh, yes, it's great for one off debugging or for making sure your smart contracts are you know, uh, working as expected. But uh, ideally, you have unit tests that can constantly run uh, with your checked in smart contracts and validate that things are still running. Um, so by relying on something like testnet, well, that's hitting the public internet. Um, it's not necessarily always reliable, um, whether that's our server, your server, the internet itself. Uh, so that's a big plus for the local Docker setup in the era test node. Uh, rich accounts. I kind of talked about this before about one of the pains with testnet is getting funds, getting that go early ETH. Well, whenever you're starting up the local setup, we inject 10 rich accounts. So uh, these accounts have, uh, I want to say 10 million ETH, I think last time as we configured it. Uh, but you don't have to do any configuration. It's already there whenever you start up the node. Uh, fast setup. So testnet's fast because it's already live. Um, but like I had mentioned before, the Dockerize setup, it'll take you know five plus minutes for it to get to a functional state where it can start uh, working on new transactions uh, in the ZK sync layer two. Your test node is less than a second. Um, finally, the debugging layer. So with with testnet and and the docker setup uh this is code that's already executing um outside of your control with the era test node we have a lot of um flags and configurability where you can actually start using this binary to debug your transactions to debug your uh, smart contracts um, and i'll go through some examples later uh, by the way, if anyone has questions, feel free to post it in the chat as we're going through, um, and uh, Angela will prompt yeah, us. Yeah, we actually have a one quick one. Um, is it best to install globally or per project? Um, I guess it sort of depends what, what you want to do. I would just say globally. Uh, it, um, the binary itself, so uh, whenever you're just running uh, this, this binary, your test node, um, it, it, it could just be downloaded to your local path. So what we do, and I'll show you a little later for some of our CI CD, is you can just download the release and run it. Um, and I'll show you a GitHub action that we use to automate this whole process. Hopefully that answers the question. Talk about some more differences. 
uh, the configuration itself, right? So obviously the endpoints are going to be different, right? Testnet's hosted on the internet, so uh, that's the URL. But if you're on the Docker setup locally, the uh, layer two is at you know port 3050. The uh, local test node is at 8011. Uh, the chain IDs are also different, um, 2080, 270, 260, and the layer one. So this is the big drawback with your test node. Uh, Testnet has Goerly, the local Docker setup. I talked about one of the Docker images being a geth node, but your test node doesn't have a layer one. Uh, the reason is we, you know, it's still being built, still being worked on, um, but for the purposes of you know, just getting this up and running and testing, we don't have it connected to a layer one. Um, and that is a drawback. If you have smart contracts that need to bridge between layer one and layer two, uh, you will have to start using something like Docker. Um, but that is, that is the main uh, drawback of going this path for right now. All right, I've talked a lot about this in-memory node, um, and I do want to sort of walk you through how to use it, what is an example, um, and all the different features and sort of walk you through uh, what I've been talking about so far. So let's start with, I want to show you how we can use it with a, with a greeter contract. And uh, we're going to use hard hat. So in your hard hat config, what you want to do is uh, just update the URL, um, and I'll sort of show you this in the demo. Um, but your network URL, just point it to HTTP localhost 8011. And let's get into the demo. So uh, what I'm going to do is create a project from a template that we have. So I'm going to use our CLI tool, zk-sync-cli. And uh, I can give it the create project command, uh, give it the name of the project that I wanted to create. And you can see I picked Solidity. You can also pick Viper. But for this demo, I'm going to pick a Solidity project. It's going to set up a new uh, directory with everything that you need to uh, run the smart contract and test it. So. Let me know if this is at all too small at some points. Um, I am going to also enable screencast mode so it's a little easier to see. And what I'm going to do is first walk you through what is in this project. Right? I started from a template. Um, and as you can see, it's just a NPM project. Uh, it has three basic commands. And to make my life easier for this demo, I am going to just copy and paste this <laughs> uh, environment variable for all three commands, which is deploy. Uh, it deploys the greeter contract. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, greet calls this use greeter script. And then tests runs some unit tests. Um, the next thing I want to do is we tend to use for our scripts a environment uh, env file for environment variables. So what I'm going to do is run the node real quick. And so you can see what I'm talking about for runtime. You can see I hit enter, and it's already started up. It was pretty fast. But the rich accounts get printed out up here. There are 10 of them. And I need a private key so I can uh, get to a wallet and use those funds for deploying locally. Uh, I'm just going to set that here in the .env file. And speaking of the contract, let's go ahead and look at the contract. It's a greeter contract, uh, pretty standard uh, if you've gone through tutorials before, where the constructor takes in a string, there's a private string, there's a getter, and there's a setter. So nothing too complicated. What I'm going to do is, so everyone can sort of see, put another command line up here. All right. And the first thing I want to do is deploy these contracts to my local instance. 
And I had talked about before that hard hat needs to be updated to point to 8011, which is this local node running down here. So I did that. And I am going to start compiling the contract. It's never been compiled before. Whenever this finishes, it should take a few seconds. You'll see the artifacts show up in a different directory up here. And then once we've done that, I am going to deploy it to this network. Yep, you see the dash CK directory is done. So let's do yarn deploy. And you'll see as I ran that, the command output of the transaction that was executed shows up down here. You get to see some information about what was the transaction hash, uh, who initiated it, who paid for it, what was the gas limit that was provided, what was the gas used, how much was refunded. Um, there's other information in here, like console logs or call traces and some brief uh, events information. But um, it's at a very high level. You can start digging into that, and I'll, I'll go through that later. But uh, for now, what we care about is over here in our script, what it's done is printed out the hash of the, the ad, sorry, the address of the contract. And why do I need that? And that is because this uses greeter script. Let me talk about what the script is uh, before I go too far, which is it connects to the private wallet based off of you know your .env file. It connects to this address where we just deployed to. And it calls a few different methods down here. So what it's going to do first is get the message and print it out by saying this is the message is a uh, current message. Uh, hello, people is going to be set as the new message. We're going to wait for that transaction to complete. And then we're going to print out the message is now hello, people is what it should be. While that's going on, you should see down here uh, all of the calls, all of the transactions that get made so that uh, you can follow along with what the node is doing whenever it receives this script or these commands. So it's done. It's pretty fast. But you'll see right here, the message is, hi there. And the transaction is this. And whenever it completed, then it grabbed the new one, and it says, hello, people. So that's what we're expecting. And you can dig through some of the transactions over here to validate what's going on. You can see the calls where it's getting the greeting. Um, and you'll see another call right before it updates it, and then another call right after. So that matches the contract.greet, contract.setgreeting, and then contract.greet again. Uh, last thing. So in this you know, demo repo, you might have noticed that we have a uh, test directory. So with our tutorials, we uh, try to include tests. And in this one, it's just a test that uh, validates uh, you can deploy the greeter contract. You can set it initially to high. You can update it to hola mundo. And then once uh, it's complete, you get it again, and it should be updated. So this is an example of what you could see in your CI builds is you just run yarn test. I forgot I need to update the provider because uh, this is using the wrong version of a bug we fixed. Apologies. Let me grab this right here. OK, let me try again. All right, there we go. So it runs 170 milliseconds pretty fast, where we're just validating your smart contract. And you can write as many tests as you want for different scenarios. So 
let's talk about what did we see. You, I showed you how to start the ear test node with that simple run command. Uh, deploying contracts, we have this plugin called Hard Hat ZK Sync Deploy. In our templates, it's already added there, but uh, if you feel free to look at the Hard Hat config.ts and it'll show up as a plugin where it automatically takes care of the nuances of deploying to a ZK Sync network. We showed you how to use the rich accounts, right? It's the first 10 accounts that print out whenever you run a node. We executed a contract against the node, and we ran some automated tests. So that's the basics. But let's start digging into some things that make a test node a little more unique, right? Giving you access to things like console logs, call stacks, uh, more uh, in-depth information. And one thing we realized whenever we were looking at debugging practices of what what is wrong with my SARC contract? We just noticed console.log everywhere. And it is a pretty safe assumption to say everyone has debugged with console.log, which is why in Hardhat, in their network, they have contracts, smart contracts, for uh, logging console information um, and storing that and displaying that. And we've tapped into that, and we support that. So let's show you what we mean. In the, let's go ahead and close things. In the greeter contract. Up until this point, uh, doesn't really do too much. But in set greeting, what we're going to do is add a few lines where I'm going to console.log that set greeting has been called. Then I'm going to console log out the value that was passed in. And then I'm going to add a small check that says, hey, if the value passed in is equal to test, then I want you to basically uh, error out and say, you received a test value, uh, something went wrong. Basically, do not set the value to test. Um, console.log, uh, just so you see, it comes imported in from hardhat slash uh, console.sol, uh, so uh, that Solidity contract right there. So. Let's go ahead and start compiling this. We'll compile this again. And let's run the uh, tests one more time. Now, if you look at the previous test, so the node's still running down here. We can stop it and run it again if you want. Um, but the console log section is is blank. There's there's nothing there. Um, let's go ahead and do yarn test. So we ran the test again, but this time you'll notice, hey, console logs show what we were expecting, which is uh, in the test we are setting it to hola mundo. Over here we see a line for set greeting called. And then right underneath it, hola mundo. Cool. So logging works, right? You can see the console logs are here. Uh, let's take another look at uh, this check, right? So we wanted to say that if it's test passed in, we don't like that. We're going to throw an error. And let's see what that looks like. So in our test, I'm just going to set it to that value. And you'll see uh, test failed, right? Uh, unexpected stopping of the execution of the transaction. But over here, you'll see received a test value. Uh, this is uh, that it has been the execution of the transaction was reverted. Um, there are some other error messages which are you know, before it attempts to execute the transaction, it will estimate the gas cost first, and it couldn't do that. Um, it couldn't do that, even though it tried with the probably highest gas limit that we have. And it's because, you know, this received a test value is always being thrown. Um, and so that is the string we are providing from the require. Uh, let's talk a little bit about... Um, at this point, I have shown you the console logs, but there's 
also the call stacks. So in here, uh, the let me actually change this to be passing again. So I've shown you console logs. Uh, there's also uh, call traces. So if you wanted to take a closer look at uh, the full uh, call stack of what's going on, normally you would have to execute the transaction and then call a debug namespace endpoint. Uh, but you can actually just see it in line as it's being executed here. So the way to do that is we can call the uh, config underscore set show calls API. You can also restart the node with uh, so show calls flag uh, whenever you call run. But uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an API call real quick to config set show calls. So I'm going to run the test again. I haven't changed anything else over here. But now you'll see, hey, look at this entire call stack that's being printed out. Let me show a little more. Um, and you'll see the console logs are here. Call trace stack is here. And it gives you a whole bunch of information about what is happening underneath the hood. Uh, for example, if you go a little bit higher before the set greeting, this is where in the test it is uh, creating the uh, deploying the smart contract. And so whenever it creates a address uh, and returns it as part of the transaction receipt, it's coming from right here. That is this step, this create command. Uh, something else to notice is the commands on the right, uh, these hashes are uh, <laughs> difficult to read and understand. Um, you'd have to look them up. But we have added the ability to automatically fetch from the open uh, API. Let's see, set resolve hashes, this guy. So if I call config underscore set resolve hashes, and I call this again, It's a little slower to execute because it is going out and fetching the human readable names for a lot of these values. So let's go back up to that create and let me make that a little bigger. So here's that create again, but now you can see, oh, here are all the calls that led up to the creation of your uh, your address, deploying this contract, right? You can see that it's um, setting TX origin, setting gas price, and it keeps going down and down and down until it gets to the point of uh, creating uh, your address. And before that, it did get code size, store account construction code hash, uh, get code size right after, mark account code hash is constructed, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're having issues, and we'll show that a little bit later, this is showing you a, this is a great tool to look at uh, uh, what is going on underneath the hood when you're uh, deploying contracts or your contract reverts. Something else you might have noticed is right under the gas, we have a section that says show gas details. So <clears throat> one thing we get asked a lot is, why is my smart contract costing so much money? <laughs> why is it costing so much gas? Um, and there can be a number of reasons. And so we wanted to provide some tools where we have uh, uplo updated the underlying code to expose uh, more information about gas calculations. So let me show you what we mean. Let's call config set show gas details. Right here, we're going to set it to all. And let's run it one more time. So in the set creator, that's this call right here, you'll see there is a whole new section for gas details. So before, you know, it was telling you this is the limit, this is how much you use, what your refund was. <clears throat> but you can see a breakdown of, hey, 20% of that went to computations or opcodes. 48% went to account validation. 30% went to transaction setup go a little further, you see, oh, out of that transaction setup, 93% was like straight operator cost. And there's a whole bunch of information here uh, that you can help dig into what could be costing more uh, for the execution of some of your transactions.
And this is all configurable. So like if that's too much information to see all at once, you can just go back to running a plain node and uh, just having something to run against. But to review sort of the things that I showed you, uh, we do support hard hat console log output. We can show you the call stacks as the transactions are being executed or even the calls are being executed. The uh, events are you know, readable and easy to understand. There's a section for them underneath. Uh, their ABI functions for some of these addresses uh, are actually human readable. Uh, that's when we reach out to open chain. Sorry, that's when we reach out to open chain. So you don't just see the, the short address, you see uh, the full human readable name. Um, the errors and reverts are easy to spot. So that was when I had set the test uh, value. Um, you can see that the revert just shows up immediately. You don't have to go hunting for it. Um, and I can show you a little bit more in the next section. So up until this point, I have shown you things that are just the node running right? Uh, as a node, and that's its purpose in life. But it can actually do more. So I mentioned this before, where this node, this binary, can actually fork upstream networks, and it can replay transactions. So let me do a little diversion and talk to you about a little story where we got a message from a user of our network. And uh, basically, they said, uh, within our tests, everything works fine, but ZK Sync Era has some issues when some transactions fail with an error message, error function selector, da 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 da. Anyways, here's the link to my contract address, and I tested it myself with the same result. If you need an inform any more information, please let us know. And the ask from us is like, what happened? How can we replicate what the end user is seeing and dig in a little further? Right, this transaction already existed. Well, what we can do is actually replay this transaction. So in your test node, in this binary, instead of calling run, we can call replay underscore TX, replay the transaction. And we'll say fork off of testnet, and then give it the hash of the transaction to replay. I'm also adding some flags in here for resolving the hashes. So that's you know getting human readable uh, names for the ABIs. And then showing the full call stack. So you can get a more in-depth view of what's going on. And let's show you sort of what that link was for their contract address. So in the Explorer, you know, this is basically what they sent us. And you see, oh yeah, yep, yeah, there's a bunch of failures. <laughs> this top transaction, you, know, you can go ahead and click on it, and we see we're like, okay, we want to replay this transaction. So just copy it, and in the command, what I'm going to do is, I already have this preformatted, but it's the same transaction hash as what I just showed you up here, E479. <clears throat> I'm going to stop this node and paste this command. So what it's doing is it forked off of testnet, and it forked at the block uh, necessary to run this transaction hash. So it sees that in this transaction, right, uh, or in this block, there are two transactions that it's going to run. The first transaction finished fine. That's good. And it's now working on the second transaction. And it takes a little time because it's hitting the API to convert <laughs> these values into human readable names. Uh, but I promise it'll be worth it. And here we go. Oh, all right. You see red, right? So let's take a look. Right here is where we get a error panic. So in their set latest answer, that is where they're having a panic. But you can also see all of the uh, methods that have been called or everything that's been accessed beforehand to uh, lead up to this error, to lead up to this panic. You can also see, yeah, their gas limit was 900,000. They've used 824. Um, we can go into, again, more gas details if we wanted to. Um, we can look at their events. 
Uh, but the other nice thing is you'll notice the node is up and running. So whenever we are replaying these transactions at the end of it, we still have a functional node. So if someone wants to, if we wanted to continue right where that user left off in this transaction and run another transaction or try something else, you totally can. Um, it's still forked off of testnet at that exact uh, height, but uh, it's it's still running and has the rich accounts and just runs like a normal node. So I had talked briefly, but uh, I mentioned it where you can actually fork where you want, right? You saw the, you sort of saw that implicitly with the previous command, but you can fork and say, hey, just fork at this specific uh, block height and fork testnet. Uh, you can also fork mainnet if you want, right? Uh, nothing stopping us from just forking either of the two networks. So uh, I've shown how to fork you know, mainnet and testnet locally, uh, do so at a specific height, shown you how to replay transactions. Uh, I went into gas in investigation in the last uh, section, but you know, putting it here. Um, yeah, so let's move on to CICD integration. One of the goals that we had for the project was uh, to provide a tool so that you can quickly and easily test your smart contracts, uh, even in a CI/CD system. So what we've uh, just released is a GitHub action to make it really simple. So here's an example of a GitHub workflow where the job is just called build, and it has this one step in here that I've highlighted in green called uh, run your test node. And all you have to do is pass this in. And in the next step, just say yarn test or run your test however you want. And the node will be running uh, available on localhost uh, port 8011, uh, just like how you've been running locally. So uh, we've started adding this to some of our uh, tools in-house where it is a simple GitHub action, uh, like two lines away from you know, having a local node where you don't have to wait on a full Docker setup or um, only unit tests or whatever the case may be. Um, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible to have a consistent way for testing your smart contracts with ZK Sync. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's next. So we recent only recently started this project. Uh, I want to say it's been about two and a half months, three months maybe. Uh, so one of the big things is implementing all the different APIs. We're still going through, and every week, every release, we are adding you know four or five, six APIs uh, from the ETH namespace, the EVM namespace, hardhat namespace, debug namespace, and just adding more APIs so that people who are using them today in their smart contracts or their deployment tools or uh, their scripts, uh, it, it'll just work uh, is the idea. Uh, one other big goal for this project was making it open source from the beginning and growing that open source community. So uh, please feel free to look at the release notes that we have and see uh, the the videos, the tutorials, look at the GitHub issues that we've made. We've tried tagging some issues with uh, good first issues so that people who are new to the project can you know start contributing. Um, even if it's just you know go to the release and download the binary and run it yourself uh, and you know talk with uh, or show it off or just you know talk with the GitHub discussions channel that we have. Um, that's you know a, a success like moving in the right direction for us. Um, integration with the Hard Hat testing API. So uh, if you've ever used Hard Hat and you're running tests against smart contracts, you'll know that they have a, a similar network. It's called the they call it Hard Hat network, and it is running in JavaScript, and you can just hit it locally with your Hard Hat tests, and ideally we want to integrate with that. We want to make it just as easy. We don't want you necessarily to have this 
binary or this node running separately. We would want it to have it running all as one experience and then have you know, the hard hat node, that JavaScript node, be your layer one, right? Like I had said before, we don't have a layer one yet, but it doesn't mean we can't add one later on and start adding that functionality of the two talking to each other. Um, so that is something that we are looking towards. Account impersonation, we literally just merged a PR today to add uh, basic account impersonation. So uh, this is a big one for helping with things like uh, stake testing or um, just a, a bunch of different scenarios that we've heard from the community. And uh, the there's some follow-ups to this, but in the next release, this, this should be available for everybody. Um, and we are very open to hear back from ideas that the community has, where we um, are, we have the opportunity to make a test node that can do whatever you want, do whatever you need to make it easy or easier to uh, write smart contracts and deploy them, um, and just getting started, um, or to debug a problem that's already happening and maybe you don't have the access that you quite need or it's not telling you the thing that you need we can you know change things so that it is easier um, we are not leaving uh, more up to to the developer to guess why something isn't working for them we can add features here and there that you know just make it work for you or tell you what you've done wrong right and some networks don't do that um, and we can we have an opportunity to change that at least with the testing layer. So uh, give us your feedback. Here's a link. Um, uh, we have a GitHub uh, discussions uh, that's pretty active, and um, we're watching it all the time. So uh, feel free to hop on there if you have any questions about just the network at all. It doesn't have to be this, this testing tool. It can be any of our SDKs, the network, the tutorials, et cetera. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, any questions? or comments, feedback? Um, thank you so much, firstly. There was one in the questions area. Um, what is your background crypto library? Which hash elliptic curve SQL? Question mark. Um. Which, oh man, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'd have to get back to you, and, and I'll and I'll respond back. <laughs> Not <Sorry>. a problem. <laughs> um, one more thing: that link, that feedback link. Um, is there any chance you could, or one of your team, um, paste that in the chat so we could uh, get access to it? Yeah. Uh, oh wow! You're seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> preparing to get my uh, yeah the screen mirrored. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I think Reddy has just asked a question in the chat area. Can you say more on this? This is an open track in collaboration with the Onyx SSI SDK and ZK Sync areas account abstraction. Uh, yeah, as Albi said, uh, it's an open track. Um, our, we are open to hearing and seeing and reviewing any submissions. Um, we're excited to see how people can be using the new uh, uh, Onyx SSI um, SDK, their account abstraction um, it plays like they do an implementation on top of our account abstraction. So for those who don't know, in ZK Sync, we have native account abstraction with our network. And so uh, they built on top of that. Um, Albi can provide probably more information on that. Um, she's helping uh, coordinate uh, this, this hackathon track. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Alvi. I can see her in the chat. Um, yeah. And then there's a question uh, from Lucas as well, asking um, again about the bounties. There is no bounty in this hackathon to improve the in-memory node, right? Um, I haven't seen it in the hackback. Uh, correct. As far as uh, we know, I'm sure Alvi's typing uh, the official response. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, the majority of this presentation was to just bring awareness to anyone who's trying to deploy uh, something to ZK Sync uh, 
that, hey, there's an option where you don't have to use a test net, right? You can do everything locally, um, and it's just another option for, for you to um, start testing and uh, make progress fast or even troubleshoot problems that you're running into. Cool. Um, anything else? Now I can just see how I'll be in the chat <laughs> responding. Fantastic. Um, cool. I mean, I think that's all the questions for now. Um, uh, Dustin answered with our supported precompiles. Um, yep. Feel free to read them all in chat. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so uh, anyone, if you're, or everyone, if you're still there, um, drop us a little emoji in the chat so we know you're uh, <laughs> present still. Um, but yeah, unless, is, do you have any other last comments or um, kind of pieces of advice maybe to give the hackers? Um, I would just say, as it's kind of like loose advice, but be creative. Like, don't don't just only follow a tutorial. Um, it's great to start with, um, but when it comes to the submissions, like, make us think, like, wow, I, we never thought about that. Like, those are the submissions that get us the most excited. Yeah. Well, very very important to think of creative and innovative solutions for things, and and yeah. Excitement is always nice. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess we can end the workshop here. Um, thank you everyone so much for coming. Um, thank you again, Nick, for speaking and sharing uh, really exciting stuff. And I guess, yeah, uh, Lucas in the chat, if you wanted to use the in-memory node, then please go ahead and do so. There's <laughs> nothing stopping you. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Alvi. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and hopefully we will see you tomorrow for two more workshops to finish off the week with a bang. Cool. See you all soon. Thanks again, Angela. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.